Okay. Um, members, order. We have a quorum and we are now in public session. Can I welcome members uh, to this afternoon's sitting of the Public Accounts Committee? Members should be aware that mobile phones must be set to airplane mode or turned off. It is not sufficient to put mobiles on silent mode as they continue to interfere with the Assembly recording. This session is being recorded in video and audio and can be accessed via online streaming either on the Assembly website or Democracy Live. Agenda item one, apologies, I don't think we have any you know, present today. Agenda item two then, minutes of the 4th of February 2021, pages 6 to 11 of your pack. Um, are members content and do I have your approval and permission to sign them? Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Um, agenda item three then is declarations of members' interests. Uh, to each meeting members are required to register relevant financial and other interests in the register of members. Interest. Do any members have any interest they wish to declare this afternoon? Other than that, my car is going for the MOT very shortly. <laughs> no, so, Ranger. Sorry? MOTs are going for the MOTs. All oh, right, okay. The MOTs, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Any matters arising from the minutes, members? Nope. Okay. So, we've reached agenda item five then, which is uh, correspondence. Pages 14 to 176 of your pack. And at this stage, I would invite Mr. Cairn Donnelly, the Controller and Auditor General, and Mr. Kyle Bingham, the Assembly Support Officer team, to join the meeting. We just bear with us as they come to the chamber. Okay, um, so agenda item five. Good afternoon, Mr. Donnelly and Ms. Keane. You're very welcome. Can I just check if Kyle Bingham is with us and can hear us okay and confirm us by just letting us know whether we can hear you or not? Good afternoon, Kyle. Yes. Yeah. Good afternoon, Chair. Okay. I afternoon. can hear you loud and clear. Okay, thank you. <coughs> okay, members, I refer to correspondence dated the 22nd of January 2021 in your pack at pages 15 to 19 from Mr. T. I. McManus, enclosing previous letter of the 20th of sorry of July 2020 members I also refer to correspondence dated the 8th of February 2021 in your pack of pages 20 to 21 from the Comptroller and Auditor General on the Charities Commission of Northern Ireland CCNI regarding the impact of my bride judgment uh, that the community minister is about uh, to commission an independent review of charity regulation and the effect effectiveness of the regulator also in order uh, to provide assurances uh, regarding the bomb review, which specifically explained complaints relating to CCNI's inquiry into the Disabled Police Officers Association, CCNI has appointed an independent council to complete the review. Members, both reviews are expected to be completed in the next six months, following which the Comptroller and Auditor General will bring back a report to this committee. Uh, members, are you content that the CNAG's approach, uh, as I have outlined, is okay? Uh, that he will report back to the committee in due course. Now you content that we also write to Mr McManus to update him on what steps the Comptroller and Auditor General is taking in relation to this issue. Agreed. Members agreed? Agreed. Mr Donnelly, is there anything you want to add to what I have said? Uh, no, there is something we will keep an eye on. Um, it is a crowded space in terms of reviews at the minute, um, and um, I would expect that those reviews will lead to change and improvement. Uh, we'll keep an eye on them and uh, report back uh, when they're completed. Okay, thank you. Okay, members, content then. I move on to uh, correspondence uh, dated the 2nd of February 2021, your pack, pages 22 and 23, from Paul Murnahan, Regional Director, NIBT Enterprises, and his concerns regarding the recent PAC report on land, web and digital transform transformation. Any members, any comment they wish to make on that? Uh, 
Has the controller and order general any comment they wish to make? No, there's no, no. comment. Okay. Um, yeah. Right. Are you then, members, content to note and forward this correspondence on to the Northern Ireland Audit Office? Agreed. Great. I've, I've got agreement from the members in the chamber. Are those members who are joining us remotely able to hear us okay? Because we can't. They may be on mute or something. They're not appearing yeah. on the screen even. Sorry. All right. If you ask them to raise their hands. Yeah. yeah. Can, I, can I ask those members who are joining the meeting remotely if they could raise their hands to show an agreement? We seem to have lost video link. Matthew and Andrew. Shows it's a proves it's a live show. Are they, uh, yeah, they've all raised their hands. Okay. Thank you very much. Members, um, okay. Members who refer to correspondence dated 3rd of February 2021 in your pack, pages 24 to 26, from Edward Cook regarding Ulster University's decision to relocate 800 students from Belfast to McGee in Londonderry. Mr. Cook has sent his correspondence to individual MLAs, uh, the Committee for the Economy, and the Northern Ireland Office. Sorry, Northern Ireland Audit Office, and copied on Facebook. Uh, any member, any issue you want to raise, all right, Mr. Hilditch? Sure, just to, I, th I think it is something that would come to mind that Mr. Cook has hit on in relation to what extent of the facilities down there. Is medical students was going to yeah, be right. that correct? That's right. And just how far they've gone with providing facilities for those people at York Street? Mm -hmm. And has there been a waste? Mm -hmm. Considering that they came to government here looking for quite a substantial loan. To finish the buildings off. <coughs> yeah, Mr. Beggs. Uh, I think there is there is a long term issue here. I'm not quite sure at what point it is an issue for us. Um, um, <coughs> in the in their own report, it indicated that students, potential new students, staff, and the trust all preferred a location in the Greater Belfast area where most of the placement and uh, subsequent roles would be, um, and expressing concern already affecting. Uh, the numbers who were applying for jobs. I personally have written to the Equality Commission on this issue uh, as well, but I'm not sure at what point it becomes an issue for the <coughs> office. Certainly in the past, they relocated the Catering College from Jordanstown uh, against the wishes of students and the catering industry. We indicated their concerns that it wouldn't work out. Subsequently, it didn't work out, and it was relocated into the Greater Belfast area. Um, I think certainly there is a huge potential of um, additional costs because students will have to have not only accommodation uh, in, at McGee campus, but uh, I think approximately 30 weeks in each course is uh, on placement. So a second uh, accommodation will have to be found in the Greater Belfast area. That will either be falling on the public purse which I, I don't see how it, 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 the public will be able to afford it, or alternatively the students who in turn will choose to go somewhere else. So I think it, it, is, it is, for lots of reasons, it doesn't work. Well, do, do members want a letter to go to the university's council asking reasoning? Or? Yeah, some clarity on the points that have been made anyway. The propose, yep. pr proposal, Mr Hill, is you seconding that, Mr Beggs? Yep, certainly. Okay. Agreement, members? Agreed. Mr. O'Toole, do you want to come in? Can you hear? Can you hear me? Yes, can you? I, I, I suppose that my question would be: What precisely are we asking for um, clarity on on all of the points? So, I'm sort of conscious of the fact that this is a policy decision that's been arrived at, but it hasn't been implemented yet. So, um, it's a it, it's an open question: the extent to which the Public Accounts Committee is. Um, has virus, as it were, has uh, should be looking into this, and and if we're writing an open-ended kind of give us an explanation for why these places are being moved to McGee, it would seem a bit um, open-ended. So it would be uh, uh, I would be keen to see the draft of the letter. Well, before that letter would go, all members will see a draft of the letter. That's the, that's the, the way the system works. It, it's not a case of us looking into it. We're simply asking for clarification. Thank you. 
Okay, members, thank you. Okay, uh, then the next piece of correspondence, uh, refer to correspondence dated the 4th of February 2021 in your pack at pages 27 to 174 from Mr Jim Shannon, MP, regarding DERA and the number of judicial reviews of farmers' appeals and the cost of these over the last number of years. <coughs> the sizeable correspondence includes press cuttings and responses from DERA on this matter. Mr Shannon also wrote to the Comptroller and Order General on this issue on the 2nd of February 2021, which is at page 122 of your pack. Um, has any member any comments they wish to make on this? Mr Hillish? Sure, I, I'd suggest we know it today and await that meeting. Um, mm. We must okay. uh, report back to us. <laughs> okay. I should also make members aware that we are, uh, if you're content to note Mr Shannon's correspondence, that the issues that Mr Shannon has raised with the Controller and Order General. I understand, Mr, Mr. Uh, Donnelly, you're meeting with Mr Shannon in the near uh, future? We're meeting with Mr Shannon sometime soon. And, okay. um, um, we're also doing a, a study on judicial reviews and how they work, so it might link into that. So we're in listening mode. As you see, there's an extensive mm. amount of correspondence, yeah. and we're listening to understand okay. what the issues are. So, are members content that uh, a letter response would go to Mr. Shannon, um, acknowledging that we have discussed his correspondence and that we will um, await um, Mr. Donnelly coming back to this office post his meeting and, and further work that the audit office will do? Um, uh, members content with that? Read. Yep. I think that's the best. Mr. Muir. Thank you very much, Chair. I don't know what's wrong there, but we're permanently on mute, so we are sort of trying to, trying to yeah, speak there. It's about the previous item, if it was possible, because I wasn't able to contribute to that, which was 5.4. Well, just, just hang on and put this one to bed, and then I'll bring you in, if okay. that's okay. Yeah. So, um, in relation to the Mr. Shannon's correspondence, and, and, and as I've outlined, members agreed on that? Okay, that's great. Okay, Mr. Muir, you can want to come in on the the previous issue then about um, the uh, yeah. So I, I would agree with the comments from uh, from Matthew around that. I think it's important to see content of the letter, and it wouldn't be agreeing to any letter which would be opposing this move, and um, because I, there's different views on that, and I think that's more for an issue for the uh, the committee for the economy. So it's important to receive the letter, and I would not want to be associated with anything which would be opposing <coughs> the move. But I think, to be fair, uh, no member used that word, uh, and uh, and there was no no. It was simply to ask for clarification. Uh, uh, you know, and the, the two members in front of me here, simply asking questions and clarification. And as we said before, the the, the letter would, when drafted, uh, will will uh, be circulated to members so they're in agreement. But it's simply asking questions on clarification. It's not taking this committee is not taking a position on it at this stage. Is that okay? Yeah, I think it's important to see the letter before, before it goes. Yeah, and, and you will? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> okay, then moving on. Um, I referred to correspondence dated the 5th of February 2021 in your pack at pages 175 from Cathy Gray regarding the Bill of Rights. Um, I suggest we forward this to the Ad Hoc Committee on the Bill of Rights and members' content. Agreed? Agreed. Okay. Um, I refer to correspondence dated the 8th of February 2021, your pack, at pages 176 from Leslie Hogg, Clerk of the Assembly, regarding uh, charges for the Assembly Chamber. Um, Ms Hogg was not aware that the additional broadcasting charges were directly allocated to committees, and this has now been reallocated to the Clerking and Member Support Office. You will recall that uh, we received a bill, uh, for, because we were the first committee to have a meeting in the Assembly Chamber, we received a bill from that. Uh, which I wasn't happy with and, and, and uh, contested, and they, I'm pleased to see that, that uh, the uh, Chief Executive of the Assembly has, uh, the Clerk of the Assembly has agreed. Um, okay, members, then, if you're content to note, we'll move on. Refer to correspondence dated the 8th of February 2021 in your table pack at pages 3 to 4 from Mike Brennan, the Accounting Officer and Permanent Secretary of the Department of the Economy. Confirming his attendance on the 18th of March, 2021, regarding the, the inquiry into generating electricity from renewable energy, Mr. Brennan highlights that it will be difficult to provide definitive answers to some questions of the day, 
as evidence from KPMG and other sources have not as yet been agreed uh, with the Northern Ireland Audit Office colleagues. Um, we can discuss this matter further in a forward programme uh, later in the meeting, if members are cont content to um, note for now. Is that agreed? Agreed, agreed. everyone? Agreed. Okay, thank you. Is it Clark, yeah. Yeah. Because he's just said he's, he's muted. Can I just check, in terms of our um, members who are joining us remotely, can you all hear and can we all hear you, if you would just indicate? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's just, I, I know, Andrew, you were saying you were, you were muted earlier. There was, no, there was no conspiracy, I can assure you of that. <laughs> no, no, attempt, just no attempt to silence you. No yeah. cross party. <laughs> No, it's fine. Yep. Okay. Did the clerk just wants to come in on an issue? Yep. Okay. No, it's just broadcasting. Have sent me a message. I've, I've I've asked broadcasting to put you all in the spotlight. So that that means it's up to you to mute and unmute. Um, you can also use. I think you can use the red hand facility, but um, you should be all able to contribute. But just uh, you know, be aware that you you can mute and unmute yourselves. Okay. <coughs> Okay, members, at this stage we will go into closed session for a briefing from the Audit uh, Office team on the inquiry into Driver and Vehicle Agency 2019-2020. Uh, broadcasting can ask you to bring in Suzanne Murphy, Audit Manager, and Caroline Laird, Auditor, both with the Northern Ireland Audit Office. Okay, um, Ms Murphy, Ms Laird, can you see and hear us okay? I can hear you. Thank you, Chair. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, members, so I'll just confirm we are now in closed session. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber programme signed. <laughs>